Hey mamas, welcome to Mental Health Monday with Detroit Moms and me, Carrie Biscalonis at Reset Brain and Body. So today we are talking about what to do when things feel bleak, hopeless, anxiety ridden for the future. Um, I think a lot of us in the last few months keep experiencing that okay, when will this all end? Like, when will things be normal? When will I feel at peace? When can I get my life back, my routine back, um, my sense of safety? When can I see loved ones? When can my kids see their friends again? When will school go back? So many questions. And it's really easy to get overwhelmed in all of this. So I know that for me, I have the tendency to future trip. So if any of you have heard that term before, future tripping, it's when we spend so much of our time and energy thinking about the future, the what ifs and the if then. And we do this in a lot of different ways. So there's the, when I have a new job, when I get married, when my kids go back to school, then I will finally be fulfilled or lose that weight or start that career of my own. And that gets us in this constant delaying and procrastinating and kind of excuse driven environment. The other thing that it does though, is when we're future tripping, we're taking ourselves out of the present moment and into again, this depression, overwhelm, and anxiety. And for me as an Enneagram 7, for those of you that know of the Enneagram, Enneagrams are all about grasping and seeking new opportunities, constantly living with this fear of missing out. And my husband jokes with me often in a, maybe not always the joking way <laughs> of saying like, hey, when will you ever be content? And it makes me always think of that Hamilton song of, you know, he will never be satisfied. Okay, now I'm kind of embarrassed I'm singing on um, live Facebook, but hopefully some of you know what I'm talking about. But when we are constantly future tripping, it's this pervasive feeling of never being satisfied, never being content, never having or being enough. And it's exhausting and it is something that again, takes us away from the joy of just being here day to day, you know, let's enjoy our starter home and let's enjoy the kids at this age, even though it's hard and they're waking up in the middle of the night and let's enjoy our body for what it is right now, even though you're 10 pounds over your pre-baby weight, but man, like look at what you've achieved. So I have noticed with myself and with clients that when we are future tripping, we are either overly discontent or overly depressed and feeling defeated. And both of those feelings just allow us to settle into this massive overwhelm, feeling stuck, not knowing where to go to next, really feeling ungrounded in that then maybe we're coping in ways that we wouldn't traditionally enjoy ourselves uh, coping with, maybe we would regret, and we are finding ways to numb or escape. We are just simply not living at our best selves. Maybe we're being impulsive. We're, again, grasping things to try and make us feel in control, make us feel certain about what's next when we all know, well, sometimes we forget, <laughs> but typically, there's so little that we can control, so little. And that in itself can be really scary, but then that's why we're gonna talk about, okay, what, what do we do with this, with this feeling of discontent or depression or defeat, the overwhelm when the future feels scary, overwhelming, uncertain, and outside of your control. So number one is that you have to first look at what can I control, what can I not control? Plain and simple. and when you really recognize that the majority of things you cannot control and the one thing you can control is your own attitude, your behavior, your thoughts, your mindset, it allows for a lot of freedom, but then it makes you realize that you have to do the work. <laughs> if it's all on you, then it's like, okay, I guess I'm the one that has to do the work. So the next steps are about how do I come inside and develop that self-awareness, work with that self-awareness to then 
say, okay, if I can know that I can control my thoughts, my actions, my behaviors, then how do I do that? <laughs> so the first thing in being able to control our own reactions to the future tripping is to fact check. And that's asking ourselves the question of what in this moment do I absolutely know is true? What in this moment do I absolutely know is true? There's a lot of things that we think we know, but we really don't only ask ourselves that question. We know, we know that the news isn't always giving us the truth. We know that our Facebook feeds or our friends or our family, there's bias everywhere. So what in this moment do I know is absolutely true? A lot of times it's simple things like my feet are on the ground. I'm breathing. I'm wearing a jean jacket. <laughs> the time is 1236. I'm hungry. There's very few things that in this moment we know are absolutely true. And so often it doesn't involve anything around us. It's about our internal experience. So that in itself is really grounding because it gets us out of this like, oh, but what if this and they said this and I don't know about this. It's like, no, what in this moment do I know is absolutely true? Okay. So that is a huge step in just being able to, right? Okay, I'm coming to my breath. When I'm having a panic attack in the middle of the night, what do I know is absolutely true is, okay, I'm lying in bed. My head is on my pillow. There's not actually a world war going on right now. <laughs> Maybe you've also had some of those fears. <laughs> okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to release the expectations. And I like to talk about expectations as expectation hangovers. So you know when you're like planning a trip with your family and you're like, we're gonna go on a vacation to Florida and we're gonna have so much fun and go to the beach and the kids are all gonna get along and then you're driving home from Florida because like your flight got canceled and one kid threw up on themselves in the backseat of the car and you're like, man, like that was not the vacation that I thought it was going to be. And then you get kind of sad and depressed and feel guilty that you even thought that you could do something. Ugh, it's so exhausting. So here's the thing. Expectation and hangovers suck and <laughs> they totally take away from what you were enjoying or what you could enjoy. And so the key is to release all expectations. Just let them go. Like, just don't even have expectations <laughs> because it ends up usually hurting us in the long run. And so rather than expecting a particular outcome or expecting a particular um, reaction from someone, we just say, okay, I'm open to whatever happens. I know I will be okay. I can't control so many things. So what I can control again is my attitude, my behavior, my sense of peace and adaptability. So letting go of expectations so we don't then have expectation hangovers. The other thing is that so much of what we're experiencing, particularly right now, is rooted in nostalgia in that things are vastly different from what they used to look like. And nostalgia is a really tricky way of making us feel pretty sad and making us feel like the present moment isn't good enough because, oh man, it's not what it used to be. And a lot of us are having to completely shift how we operate normally now. In addition to that, when we're thinking about the future and we're comparing it to the past, but then we're also saying, oh gosh, well now I have nothing to look forward to. Everything looks so different. It's not like how it used to be. So there's really no point. It's really depressing about what might happen or may not happen in the future. I can't go on that vacation or my kid's not going to have a normal year and they're going to miss out on this and I won't be able to see my friends and oh, so we have to acknowledge these feelings of nostalgia and, you know, kind of that dread and defeat. But then we also have to have an opportunity to say, okay, things are not how they used to be. And what the future is going to look like is not how I expected it to be, right? But where is there still good? Can I shift from what I define as a success or productivity 
or fulfillment or fun. You know, I know for me, I love to travel. I love to go to concerts. I love to eat out. I love to visit family and friends. And none of that is really on the horizon right now. So how can I find fun experiences now? Is it Let's be creative and have something different in our backyard. Let's go exploring our neighborhood. How many of you have had really robust staycations in the last seven months? So we have to redefine some of these terms that we have with ourselves so that we can find still that same level of fulfillment, even if things look different. So this all kind of culminates into the last two points, which really you guys will hear from me over and over again, and I will consistently reiterate these points in that we have to stay present and we have to be grateful. So the very act of being present is simple and not easy. <laughs> and it's something that is a daily moment to moment practice. So simple things again, like I cued you through earlier is grounding. What do I know is absolutely true right now? Okay, my breath, my feet on the ground, what I'm wearing, what my hair feels like, the sound of the sound machine behind me. That allows us to be present. Letting go of expectations, not thinking about what could happen, what would happen, what you want to have happen, but just being in the moment right now. That's being present. Shifting how we define certain things to then say, okay, it's gonna be a success if I give my kids 10 minutes of undivided attention. I'm gonna feel productive if I did the laundry today. One load, not all of them, because guess what? Productivity looks totally different now than it used to. What does social life look like now? <laughs> it could look totally different and that's okay. So allowing yourself to change the rules a bit. And then last but not least, because it never is, is being grateful. What's good right now? What it was amazing that happened yesterday? What am I really, really grateful for in this moment? That is going to be the most powerful tool for you to be grounded, be present, and not get so caught up in the anxiety, the panic, and the depression, and the defeat of an uncertain and sometimes scary future. So, Please drop us any questions, comments, anything in the comment bar <laughs> of the live event. Um, eventually I'll figure out how to read comments while I'm in these. <laughs> Thank you for being patient with me as I figure this out. Um, I am gonna take a second and just see if there are any comments that I need to respond to. Um, it looks like we're good right now. Um, Go to Elizabeth, just saying she feels everything that I'm saying right now. I, I would imagine there's a lot of you that could resonate to this topic. Know that we have so many resources on the Reset blog for you to read through, to help you through. Our own Instagram page is full of resources. Contact us. We take Blue Cross Blue Shield. We take Sliding Scale. We offer 20-minute phone consultations for free to start doing one-on-one -on -one therapy, either in person or online. There is no shame in asking for help. Saturday was World Mental Health Day. Um, and let's just keep spreading the awareness of, you know, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to ask for help. Um, so we are here for you. Have a lovely day. Thanks so much for joining us today.